remember, all of the stuff of that show was so unique. We're only at that point several weeks away from Ron Nesson hosting the show, and he's the active press secretary of the United States. So Lorne and Chevy and I go down to Washington to shoot like the opening, I'm Jerry Ford and you're not with the then sitting president of the United States. Funny story about all that no one ever talks about because it, it was the one thing the White House didn't want us to hear. After he did that and did the whole thing with us while the camera was still, he said, so boys, you all done with me? And we said yes, and he walks away and pulls the camera over on the floor. But we couldn't show that on the air, it was very funny. By the way, he's probably, up to the time he was president of the United States, up to that particular time, he's probably the most physically fit man who ever was president of the United States. He was an all-American football player, all that stuff, but he just was a klutz when it came to stuff like that at the time. And Chevy turned that into a whole thing, because remember his Joe Ford was always falling over. But that was quite a show as well. So now you have the active press secretary, and there are people to this day who think that he lost the Wyoming pro, uh, primary two days later because of the stuff that went on in that show, because Nesson was in a show that had a very risque sketch about the Supreme Court defining uh, what was, uh, oh God, not deviant sex, but something along those lines. And so it involved a couple in bed and all nine Supreme Court justices standing around the bed and Pope Billy, you can't see it, but they're beginning to say, no, no, that doesn't qualify, you know, that kind of thing. And those things really ticked off the base, and, and he lost to Reagan. And, uh, I guess, what do you call it? It come out the second of the Watergate books, the final days. And one of the classic sketches is those guys, those guys, uh, uh, Danny and uh, I guess it's John, uh, who are doing like Kissinger and and, uh, and Nixon and Praying in the White House and all that when those when that came out in the book the very first time, I mean, that stuff was really memorable. But do you think that in terms of like real pop culture based political satire, that that was? new ground that was being broken on SNL? It was the most pointed use of it up to that point, certainly in a sketch comedy show, because most sketch comedy shows, with the exception of your show and sh your show of shows, didn't go near politics for obvious reason. And this show was going after the actual people uh, who were in power at the time in sketches on a regular basis. I don't think it became what it is today on the show until we get to the fall of 76, the last election and, uh, between uh, McCain and Obama, I mean, God, Saturday Night Live was probably the most important media thing of the whole election, more important than the debates or anything, because of Tina's, you know, absolute lock on Sarah Palin and, and Amy Poehler on Hillary Clinton, I mean, it was awesome. But that's been building uh, around the show. And they're willing to do multiple things about current politics. People have dealt with it, but not on a regular basis, except as part of a monologue where you can hit it and get out. If you're doing a bunch of sketches, if it doesn't work, you're there with egg on your face for a long time.